this video, we're discussing a non-parametric procedure called the sign test. Um, the procedure is actually for dealing with one population, and we're trying to discuss whether or not we think that the median is in a certain location or not. So we're talking about the median here because the test is a non-parametric test, and we actually have some properties about the median that help make this test possible. Let's talk about those properties of median. If you have a distribution, even if the distribution is, say, skewed or something like that, we would know that in that case, still though, wherever the median is located, and remember the symbol for population median is this symbol, eta, right? Eta, E-T-A, right? That we know that 50% of the area is on the right and 50% of the area is on the left of the median. That is the definition of the median. So because of that property, we can develop a test that's pretty unique and very clever, actually. So let's talk about the test and its logic. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, look, for a set of given values, you know, and a good example I always use in um, my classes is something like, let's say I thought that um, I'm waiting too long at a fast food restaurant by my job for lunch, right? So say I step out and I want to go to, say, Taco Bell for lunch, and I realize that it's Taco Bell near my work. I feel like I'm waiting too long. Say I think I'm waiting more than 10 minutes every time I go there, right? So, you know, I could do a hypothesis test about the mean time that I wait, right? But if I did that, then I would have to rely on the parametric procedures, which assume that there's some normality there, and that might be difficult for me to ascertain. So if I don't want to rely on that, I just want to do a quick test, I can collect some results from when I go to lunch. I can record on random days the amount of time I wait, right? And I can see if that wait time is, in fact, you know, longer than the 10 minutes that I expect. And what I would do is I would use a hypothesis testing procedure, something along the lines of this, right? My claim would be that the median time that I wait is greater than 10 minutes. So this notation here, this is eta sub zero, that's just a number, right? It's a number that we'll put in for the problem. So in this case, I might say that I believe my wait time is greater than 10 minutes, right? So my median wait time, though. Why am I going to use median? Because I can develop a nice test from that. If I think my median here is 10, then what would that mean? That would mean that half the time I should wait longer, and half the time I should wait less than that, right? And then what I could do is I could simply, you know, essentially run a hypothesis test where I assume on any random day then there's a 50-50 chance that I wait more than that or less than that. And then from there what I can do is to run this hypothesis test which says that the median is less than or equal to the number 10 versus the median is greater than 10, right? And then I have this test statistic, and the test statistic is really easy to calculate. It's just a recording of the number of observations or the number of times I visited, say, that Taco Bell, and the time was greater than the 10 minutes that I specified, right? Because that goes with my HA, right? I'm claiming it's greater than 10 minutes, so the test stat is pretty logical. It's the number of times I went there and I waited longer than 10 minutes. And then from there, I use something here, which gives me the p-value. And the p-value is going to be the probability that a binomial random variable, with n being the number of times I visited to the Taco Bell, right? And p, the probability being 0.5. So a binomial random variability, sorry, a binomial random variable with those properties, with those parameters, n, which would be the number of visits I took to the store, to the Taco Bell, and p being 0.5, and then I would calculate the probability that this binomial random variable is greater than or equal to s, right, given this assumption. Again, why the probability of 0.5? Because there's a 50-50 chance that I would wait longer than that if that was in fact the median, right? Okay, so that's basically the logic of the test. Of course, you're going to want to see it worked out, and we have practice problems to see that, but that's just basically the overall logic of the procedure. There's a left-tailed version, a right-tailed version, and a two-tailed version. There's only one important detail we cannot forget here, and that is we have to remember that we're going to throw out ties. So I want to say this, that um, throw out any observation that is tied with a to not, a to not being my hypothesized median. In other words, what would I do if I went to Taco Bell and I waited exactly 10 minutes? Well, that would be a problem because then I wouldn't be able to say what? 
it's not an observation that's greater than 10, it's also not an observation that's less than 10, it's right on the line, so we toss that out actually. And that would reduce our n, so if I'd gone to the Taco Bell, say, 15 times, but I had one tie, I would remove that case and just pay attention to the 14 other visits that were not ties. Okay, so that's an important thing for any observation that's tied. So again, you have your left tail case, which is gonna basically run this hypothesis versus this one. So this one is what? That your median time or median whatever you're, you're looking at is less than the hypothesized value. And then of course your test stat is the number of observations that are less than, right? So that goes nicely. If your HA is less than, your test stat is the number of observations that are less than, your p-value remains the same, the probability that x is greater than or equal to that value there, right? That value being your test stat. Okay, and then the only other unique scenario is the two-tailed case. The two-tailed case involves basically the median is equal to a number versus it's not equal to a number. And your test stat is a little bit different. It says it's the larger of S1 and S2, where you define S1 as basically the number of observations less than the hypothesized median, and S2 is the number of observations greater than the hypothesized median. Of course, you see there is no equal to there because we're still throwing out the ties, right? So you count how many times you, you waited less, let's say, than 10 minutes at Taco Bell. You count how many times you waited more than 10 minutes. And then from there, you would you know, pick the larger of those two numbers as your test stat. And once you have that, you still use the same p-value, basically, but you multiply it by two because it's a two-tailed case, right? That's another thing that people miss all the time on the two-tailed scenario. They forget to multiply by two. We'll do sample problems where you'll be able to see that and make sure you don't commit that error. But essentially, it's two times the probability that um, your binomial random variable is greater than or equal to your test stat. And that's it. Now, the binomial table is used in these problems, or you can use software, but either way, with that, you'll be able to calculate a p-value, and you'll be able to make your decision based on the p-value. If you don't remember how to do that, of course, the problem videos will show that, but essentially, you just compare that p-value to your alpha. If it's less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. All right, so that's just a quick overview of the sign test. You really need to see it worked out to really get the full gist of how it's done, but it's very similar to many of the other hypothesis testing procedures we did. It has its own set of steps, but basically, like before, you'll be able to do the whole thing in seven steps that are pretty familiar, and once you're done with that, you'll be able to form your appropriate conclusions. Once again, remember, if you're able to reject HO, the test is perfectly fine. You can't criticize it in any way. It's good enough. However, this test happens to be very weak, so if you're unable to reject HO, at that point you may criticize the sign test and say, hmm, you know, uh, maybe I went to the Taco Bell and out of 10 visits, 8 times I waited longer than 10 minutes. This test may fail to reject the null hypothesis anyways. And if that were to happen to you, at that point you may say, hmm, I bet if I had a parametric test I would have been able to reject the null hypothesis. There are also stronger non-parametric tests available as well. So even though the sign test is a particularly weak parametric test, we do have more powerful, uh, sorry, sorry, a weak non-parametric test. We do have parametric tests and non-parametric tests that are more powerful than it. So you can decide amongst um, a whole spectrum of possibilities. The sign test is an option, but not always the best option.